Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're back with the Synology Disk Array on my desk here because we're continuing our sponsored series of videos from Synology on their new DSM 6.0 operating system. They've asked me to cover a couple of features that uh, they feel are really worth pointing out, which I'm happy to do because I've been using Synology products now for a number of years, and it stores a lot of my data that I use here on the channel. I make a lot of videos and have a lot of, a lot of data that I have to store somewhere, uh, so I usually just dump it off into my Synology disk array. But these things do a lot more than just store data. As you know, in our last video, we talked about their Plex alternative where you can run uh, this box as a little home media server and stream video out uh, not only into your home network but throughout the world too so they can do a lot of things that you might do with a cloud provider and in this video we're actually going to look at some ways you might be able to replace uh, some productivity apps you might be using with cloud providers so we're going to look at a spreadsheet that you can access uh, very similar to how you might access Google spreadsheets or uh, Excel online we're also going to look at a replacement for Evernote uh, that also has some decent word processing capabilities and uh, we're going to look at a mail server and mail client that rivals a lot of other cloud services out there too. So you can really uh, take a lot of the things you're doing with cloud providers now and run them on a box that you own and control. And that's kind of the difference here between uh, going with a cloud provider or buying one of these and getting uh, the software to run on here because the software and the data that you're using with that software lives here and nowhere else. You can of course back it up to other places but by default it stays on this device and it's not uh, in somebody else's computer somewhere else. And that provides a lot of peace of mind for a lot of folks, especially people that uh, aren't so crazy about trusting their data to the cloud or want a lot of storage and want to have a lot of users access the data in that storage without having to you know, accrue a lot of monthly fees and whatnot. So you can buy one of these for uh, a single purchase and everything you're going to see in this video comes with it. Uh, and the only uh, exception is the mail client where you do have to buy licenses after you go beyond five. But uh, for many small offices, five email licenses is probably enough. So you do get a lot of functionality and we're going to check it all out right now beginning with the spreadsheet. All right, so I'm on my web-based control panel of our Synology drive here, and you'll notice this looks a lot like a desktop operating system. They've got applications you can run, you can move and resize windows. Uh, everything you'd come to expect on a desktop operating system, you can do uh, inside your web browser on these things. They're really, really uh, nice interfaces to play with here. Now, they uh, don't want to assume that you want to run everything the, thing, the drive can do, uh, so they want you to install the applications you plan on using, and you do that through the package center up here in the corner. You just click on that, you'll get this window opened up here, and the apps we're looking at today are in the productivity section. So we're looking at the spreadsheet, a note station, as well as Mail Plus Server and Mail Plus. Now I should note that Mail Plus and Mail Plus Server are not compatible with all devices. So on our desk right now, we have a DS216 Play. Uh, this right now is just a prop because we're actually running this off a DS216 Plus that's in another room. Uh, so that one is compatible with the mail server. This one is not. So you d definitely want to check Synology's website uh, to see which devices support the mail server and mail plus if you intend on running them on your device because not all of them will be compatible. However, they all will work with uh, the note station and the spreadsheet, which we're going to look at first. All right, so let's click on the spreadsheet application first and see how it works. So it'll pull up a new tab in our browser. This is a brand new application for DSM 6.0. And you can see I've got four spreadsheets in here already and you can sort things by tags. So you can uh, narrow down a list of spreadsheets based on what you've tagged them with. I can also put these little stars on them too for like favorites or things that I'm currently working on. So you can narrow lists down that way. Uh, you can also do a search here, which will search not only the title of the spreadsheet, but also the contents of it also. So if you wanna drill down Further, you can do that, and they have some advanced options for that as well. You create new spreadsheets just by clicking on the Create button here. You also have an encrypted option, which requires a password to get into the spreadsheet. Now, you can share spreadsheets with other users. I'll show you that in a second. And you also have the ability to share them with the world if you want to. And that encrypted option might be a great way to uh, allow people into your spreadsheets without having to build them a separate account uh, on your device. So you can bring them in, give them the password for the spreadsheet, and they can come in through a link without having to create a whole user account for them on your device here. So that might be helpful. Uh, you can also import spreadsheets from uh, Microsoft Excel. You can upload ones that are already sitting on your NAS device, or you can send them in from your computer. I should note that this is still kind of a basic spreadsheet so a lot of the scripting and macros and stuff are probably not going to work it'll bring in all the numbers and everything but all of the programs that you might have running within that spreadsheet or the macros you have already programmed in will not work on here just yet so it's a little bit limited but uh, very good for basic number crunching and sharing things with 
uh, different folks on there. So we're going to pull up my cars and boats uh, spreadsheet here so you can see what one looks like. I just put in a, a couple of uh, records on here. So we've got nine uh, uh, cells of data here, rows of data. I'm going to do a quick uh, formula here to do a sum of everything. So this works very similar to how Google Docs works. Uh, you can see it's calculated that. If I you know, change things, it will update that in real time there. So uh, pretty quick to get everything in there. Uh, supports a number of functions already. So a lot of the basics that you might have in Excel are also going to be here. So there's a good list here of uh, different functions that work. It doesn't have charting or uh, more advanced features just yet, but again, I think this is useful for uh, doing some basic data entry. You also have the ability to share these things, as I mentioned. So if you have other users on the drive, uh, you can go over here and share the files with them. You can uh, limit them to just viewing, or you can also have them uh, be able to edit things. Um, so you can type in a username here. I can look for my uh, test user. I think I set up a test user earlier. There, there they are. So I can say they can view only. I can add them to that. Uh, so now when they log into their uh, version of spreadsheet, they'll see that uh, that spreadsheet available to them. And you also have the public share here, which will allow uh, people to come in over the internet to uh, view your files as well. And this is an area where uh, you are running this on your device and your device only. So they're going to need to have your IP address uh, or you can use the, uh, the Quick Connect feature that Synology sets up, which acts as an intermediary. So Synology keeps your address and they direct people to you. Uh, so Synology doesn't get your data, but they do point people at your device uh, through your firewall automatically. And that's something you, that you might find some convenience with, but you can also lock it down behind your firewall and make people have to log into a VPN or something to uh, get at that drive. So you have all of those different options for uh, securing the data. And just remember, it all sits on the drive here, nowhere else unless you uh, send it someplace else there. So a pretty nice spreadsheet application. I'm very impressed with how nicely it works. And you can also have multiple users logged in uh, and using it at the same time. So I'm going to grab another computer here and show you what it looks like when someone else is editing the spreadsheet while I'm inside of it. All right, so I'm logged in as the test user on this computer here in this window. And in the larger window, my Mac uh, is still running the same spreadsheet from a different user. And uh, both of them can see the same thing at the same time. My cursor position will also be reflected on both of these machines too. So if I move the Mac uh, cursor around a little bit, we'll see it uh, show up on a, a different cell on the other computer and vice versa. So it uh, works very similar to how Google Docs works. And if I update the spreadsheet as well, I can change that cell and you'll see the formula changing here at the bottom too when I uh, change the numbers around. So uh, everything you'd expect from a, a multi-user spreadsheet will work over here. And what's also nice, and I'll switch back to our Mac screen here, is that if you have somebody in there screwing things up, you can go over to the history icon here and it uh, keeps a record of just about every change that's made. So every time uh, the spreadsheet gets synced back to your Synology NAS device, uh, it will keep a record of that change in the application here. So I can go back uh, to different versions of the spreadsheet and see what was changed. And I have the option to restore the spreadsheet to what it was like before those changes were made or make a new one uh, so I can start over again if I need to. So you do have the ability to kind of see what different users did uh, and step through changes that were made over time. So uh, pretty nice to have that, especially if you have people on your network that are prone to screwing up spreadsheets. This will keep a record of everything and it will keep as many changes as your disk space allows. So if you've got you know, a multi-terabyte version of a Synology drive on your network, uh, the chances are it'll keep every change ever made because it's gonna take a lot to fill that disk up with just a couple of spreadsheets. So, uh, really functional stuff there and a nice safety measure too. So that's the spreadsheet. Uh, now we're going to take a look at the notes application, which is very similar to Evernote and has some really cool features built in. Let's have a look at that. All right, so let's click on the icon here and see what we get. So it looks very familiar, actually. It looks a lot like Evernote. So you can view all of your notes if you want. Uh, you can also create different notebooks and drill it down by the notebook level. Uh, you have tags that you can apply to things. So you can see things in different notebooks uh, with the same tags. So a lot of flexibility for organization. And uh, you can even import your Evernote notes. So you can bring in everything that's sitting on the cloud on Evernote and store it privately on your own uh, Synology NAS device here, which is pretty flexible. Uh, the notes themselves are also very flexible too. So you can uh, embed images into there as well as documents. I can bring in an additional image here if I want. So I'll pull up my downloads folder here and I'll grab uh, an image fi file that I have stored on there. I can just drag that right in. Uh, you can pretty much drag any file you want in. So an image file, it'll kind of uh, put in 
inline here, I can resize it. I could also just have it be at its original size if I want. If that's too big, I can make it smaller again. And it keeps the original file stored. So if you want the original, you can just download it. So even though it's smaller here, it didn't actually shrink the image. It keeps the, uh, the big one on file, so to speak. You also have the ability to embed documents too. So I've got uh, two documents here, a PDF and a Word doc. I can click on the little icon here just to open them up in a tab if I want, uh, or I can just download them onto my computer. So you have the ability to embed documents uh, within your notes as well, which is pretty helpful. Uh, they have a web clipper also that'll grab uh, the contents of web pages. That clipper works on uh, the, uh, the Chrome browser. It's an extension, but you can also just uh, do a cut and paste deal too if you wanted to. So I've got this article here. Maybe I want to grab the headline as well as uh, some of the text. I can go back over to my note here, uh, create a new one, and uh, just paste that in. And what's nice is it's smart enough to know that this headline here is the title of it. It brings in the image and uh, does preserve some of the formatting also. So you can use the web clipper, which will grab the whole page, or uh, you can just drag, in, uh, drag a little bit of text and graphics and just paste it in there too. Uh, so that's pretty helpful there. And if I can find it again, uh, there is also some charting functionality built in as well. So I can go over here. You can see we've got a chart loaded up. I'm just going to go uh, maximize that, and I can edit the chart. Uh, so we don't have this in the spreadsheet application yet, but we do have it on uh, the notes application. And I can take some data that's in here. I could paste in data if I wanted to, or uh, just add some data or change some data this way. And you can see that chart updating in real time as well. So um, you do have some basic uh, formatting and some word processing capacity on this as well. So uh, lots of neat features that they build in. This is just kind of the tip of the iceberg on some of the things that you can do with this. You can also share notes as well as notebooks with other users. However, I recommend that only one person is working on a note at a time. Unfortunately, it doesn't lock you out from editing somebody else's note while they're in it, uh, but you can run into some collisions from time to time where you know, somebody made a change and then someone else made a change before things got synced up. It'll give you a warning and a, and a question as to what you want to do under those circumstances. So the sharing works, but you can't do a real-time uh, collaborative uh, change to the document like you can do on the spreadsheet side. So uh, just bear that in mind as you are uh, working on things. They also added some to-do functionality also. So you can create a to-do list if you want. Uh, you have a lot of filtering and a lot of different ways you can uh, make this thing work here. So I can easily just uh, add a, a thing if I want here just by clicking on the plus icon, uh, add a new test and uh, put it onto my list of things to do there. I can set due dates by clicking on the little tab here. And uh, you do have a lot of nice, you know, basic functionality for uh, doing to-do tasks within the application as well. And what's nice is that this will uh, link up with a mobile app that they have both on Android and on iOS. So you can uh, do your to-do lists on your app here as well as use all of your notes. And you can work on them offline and then resync when they uh, come back online again. So I'll show you how this works right now on my iPhone. And there's also an Apple Watch component too. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here is the iPhone app. This will be very similar on Android as well. Right now, I'm in the notes section of the app, which we'll look at first. Uh, so you can see here that very long note we have with all the photos and whatnot are in here just fine. And I can even go in and uh, edit this as well. So I can tap on edit. I can maybe add some additional text here. Maybe I'll just say test and add a few extra lines. Hit the checkbox here, and that's going to save it. Now what it'll do is it'll save it on my phone, and it'll keep it offline until it comes in contact with the Synology NAS again. So I can force a sync like I just did there, uh, or just leave it offline until I'm back uh, at my desk, and then everything will sync up when it gets back uh, in range of my uh, Synology device. But you can see here on the computer that everything already uh, came over. So it's pretty good at keeping everything up to date uh, in real time across devices, provided everything is syncing up. We also have the to-do function on here too. So if we have my uh, vet appointment here, if I took care of calling the vet, I can tap that on the phone. And then once it syncs up again, again, it should sync up automatically most of the time if it's on the same network as your Synology drive. If I go back to my computer here and look at the tasks, you'll see that uh, my, my vet task is gone because I already completed it. So it took care of that for us also. So it does keep things in sync very well across devices, which is very helpful. Uh, this is again going to be an area where you got to come up with a strategy for connecting to your device from outside the network, either through a VPN, a direct IP connection, or using uh, Synology's Quick Connect feature to be able to get to your device uh, through the internet. But again, the choice is yours, whether you want to use Synology services to direct traffic to your box uh, or do something yourself. You can uh, arrange that for uh, what protects your data in the best way. Now, one other thing I like about the mobile app is that there are some quick icons at the bottom for doing specific things like adding audio, uh, a picture that might be in my camera roll, or I can tap on the camera icon here 
and just take a photo of my mouse here on the desk. I can use that photo and uh, just make an untitled note here and save it. And what that'll do is it'll sync back uh, over to our uh, Synology drive automatically. And if I go back to my, uh, my computer here and pull up that note, we'll see we've got the mouse now up there. I can add some uh, test uh, text to the uh, thing here and uh, just uh, sync that back up. And if I go back to my phone now, uh, we should be able to see that text now added to the note that we just did. There you go. So you can do very quick things, uh, sync them up on both ends. And again, you just want to be careful that you're not editing something in two places at once because it doesn't have a real time capability. But uh, you do have really flexible ways to get data synced up between devices. And I really like the fact that you can take the uh, phone offline uh, and be able to go and make those changes. All right, here is the companion app running on my very beat up Apple Watch here. This is the Sport Edition after a year. You get an idea as to what happens to it. Uh, here are some notes that we already uh, loaded in, including that photo we just took a little while ago. Uh, you can even see uh, some of the formatting it'll do on some other things too. So we'll go and uh, grab a few more here and maybe tap on this article that I uh, loaded in earlier. So we've got the photo from the article along with the text as well. So uh, it does mess up some of the formatting obviously, but uh, you are able to get an idea as to what the article is all about. You can read uh, the entire note in here. All the text will come over, which is pretty helpful. You can also search your notes as well. So if you don't want to scroll through all of them, you can just uh, search on some keywords and get access to all of those notes there. We also have the ability to create new notes or add to do items. So let me do this right now. Pick up some milk at the grocery store. And we'll hit done here. And what that will do is give us a confirmation to create a new task. And then once my phone syncs back up with the Synology NAS uh, downstairs, it will uh, then uh, work back to our uh, main display here. So if I go and sync it up here with my computer, uh, there we go. We've got the task now on the computer uh, as well as on the mobile app too. So pretty neat. You can do some stuff from your watch. It's pretty useful. I don't think there's an Android Wear version yet, uh, but it is kind of neat to have uh, this kind of access from your watch like you would have on a cloud service, yet it's on something that you uh, control in your home or office. All right, one last thing to check out, and that is the Mail Plus client and server. Feels very cloud-like, very much like Gmail. You get all the threaded discussions here, a very fast response to it as well. You've got a nice, uh, very complete search that you can do on here too. So keywords or uh, from different people. Um, you've really got a full, uh, you know, full email, web email client here available to you and your users. And you have a lot of control over everything because again, all that data uh, sits on the device that you own and controls. So every email that's coming in is not going out to somebody's cloud and getting copied all over the place. It's sitting on uh, something that you have within your possession. Now I should note though, uh, Mail Plus uh, does not work on this particular NAS device we have here on the desk. So you need the uh, DS216 Plus or uh, any other device with the Plus at the end of it. Uh, they have a full list of what is compatible with Mail Plus on their website. It is more of a higher end feature for their higher end devices. Everything else you just saw works on just about every Synology NAS device, but uh, the Mail Plus client and server is something that is for uh, some of their higher end devices. But you probably would need that given uh, the amount of data that goes back and forth on these, uh, on these devices for email. Um, but you do have that option available to you. If you want the full package, including email, uh, you can buy a box for a couple hundred dollars and uh, have all of this stuff working for your users, including their email accounts on something that uh, you have within your home or office. So those are some of the new cloud features running on the DSM 6.0 operating system for the Synology NAS devices. And what's great about these things is that they're a very good value compared to uh, going with a commercial cloud provider because you can load them up with terabytes of storage, have many, many users using that storage and the apps on this thing, and you buy it once and that's it. You don't have to pay a monthly fee to support all those users. And I think over time, uh, using a commercial provider with an equivalent amount of storage is going to cost a fortune uh, compared to what you can get in the door with one of these four. But backing up that data is really critical. And what we're going to do in our next video in this sponsored series is grab a second Synology NAS device back one up to the other locally on our network to get that huge amount of data on it initially. And then we're going to take that second device and move it off site and then back up incrementally to it automatically. So anytime we add a new file or change a file, it'll just push those files automatically to the other device and we'll have a safe and off-site backup that we don't really have to think about because it's going to do it for us over the internet uh, out of our house here. So if something happened to my house, everything would be safe at the other location. So that is going to be our next video. I want to thank Synology for their sponsorship. I hope you'll join me in thanking them as well. And stay tuned for that video. It's going to upload right after this one. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including gold level supporter Shabib. 
If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.